Hello and welcome to AshurMonk.com. This is the Kubernetes Explained in Plain English series, and in this video, we'll be explaining deployments in plain English with the help of Fifi and friends. This video series is meant to take you from zero to a solid understanding of Kubernetes. As discussed in the previous videos, it is usually preferred not to create a pod or a replica set directly in your Kubernetes cluster, and you'll see why in this video. We learned. That if we want to be deploying a certain number of desired pods, we want to be using a replica set. But things change often, and we all know that. Let's say we deployed version one of a web app using a replica set, and now we want to upgrade the web app to version two. What we could do is deploy another replica set using version two, and then bring this version one down manually. But why do all this work when we have deployments? Let's break down what a deployment is. Behind the scenes, deployment creates a replica set, which in turn creates pods behind the scenes. A deployment has two strategy types. The first one is the rolling update, and the second one is the recreate. By default, if you don't specify a strategy, it defaults to rolling update. Fifi has a web app with version one, created using a deployment. She made some user experience feature upgrades, and she wants to upgrade to version two. She asks Captain Cube, "What's the best deployment strategy type for this scenario?" Captain Cube recommends to go with the default strategy type, that is, rolling updates. So, what is rolling updates? In the case of rolling update strategy, deployment automatically creates another replica set and starts adding pods. The deployment does not create all of the pods at once. It creates the first pod in the new replica set, that is version two, waits till it's successfully deployed, and only then takes down one of the pods from the older replica set, that is version one. Similarly, it increments at a step-by-step -step basis. The second pod is created on the newer one, and another pod is deleted from the older replica set. What this ensures is that the application always has minimal downtime. And the end users are not as affected. Fifi just identified a huge security vulnerability in the new version of the web app, that is version two. Luckily, she has a fix in version three, but she needs to deploy version three and bring version two down as soon as possible. Captain Cube, understanding the situation, realized that slowly rolling the changes using rolling update strategy type might not be the best in this scenario. So he recommends going with the recreate strategy. Using the recreate strategy, the older replica set is first brought down immediately, and then the new replica set that that is version three is created with the required number of pods. This way, even though there is downtime for the end users, at least we were able to bring down the version two where there was a security vulnerability as soon as possible. Great. Now that we understand the concept. Let's see all of this in action. Let's break down the deployment manifest YAML file. This looks a lot like the replica manifest file. We'll start off with the API version and kind, and like always, we can find this using our kubectl explain commands. The metadata section contains the names and labels for the deployment itself. Remember, once again, these labels do not trickle over to the created replica sets or pods. We then have the spec. This is where we specify the desired number of replicas we want. In this case, let's say we want to have three pods. We then move on to the template section. This is where you define the pods that the deployment should be creating. You can directly copy and paste the pod definition file here. The one thing to note is the version of Nginx we are running here, 1.14.2. We go ahead and apply the YAML file to deploy the deployment object. kubectl apply hyphen f file name if we now run the kubectl get deployment command we will see that the deployment is created for us as discussed earlier deployment creates replica set in the backend and you can see that by running the kubectl get rs command to list out the replica set that gets created as part of the deployment the name of the replica set is the name of the deployment followed by a random string If we now run the kubectl get pods with the show label switch, we see the following pods. Notice 
how we have the labels that we specified using the pod template. But we also have another label called pod template hash. This label is added to every pod that the deployment creates or adopts from the Kubernetes cluster. Now let's say Fifi wants to update the version of Nginx from 1.14.2 to 1.16.1. And this time, let's use the rolling update strategy. Remember, rolling update is the default strategy. So even if you don't specify the strategy type and only update the image version in the deployment file and apply the changes, it would trigger a new deployment rollout. Let's run the kubectl get rs. You see that there are two replica sets now. Deployment creates the second replica set with the new version of the pod template. Let's call it version 2. Now, if we run the kubectl describe deployments command, you can see what happens behind the scenes. First, let's look at the deployment strategy type. We see that it defaulted to rolling update, which is what we would expect. With the rolling update, we also have a rolling update strategy, which specifies these two fields, max unavailable and max search. So what do these mean? Max unavailable lets you define how many or what percentage of pods can you afford to bring down or be unavailable during a deployment. Max surge on the other hand limits the max number of new or percentage of new pods that can be created during a deployment. Great. Now that we understand that, let's look at it on a step-by-step -step basis. First, the replica set with the new version scales up by one. It waits till it's successfully deployed. Once it's successfully deployed, it brings down the older version of the replica set from 3 to 2. Similarly, next it goes back to the new replica set and scales it up to 2, and then scales down the older replica set to 1, and so on and so forth, until the older replica set comes back to 0. Now we looked at upgrading from version 1 to version 2 in the previous example. Let's also talk about how we would go about upgrading your web app from version 2 to version 3, but this time to fix the security vulnerability. So we will leverage the recreate deployment strategy type. We make the changes in the deployment manifest file and then update the image to the latest version and apply the changes. This time when we run the kubectl describe command, we would see that the older replica set version 2 was brought down immediately first before creating the new replica set that is version 3. But Goldie did a user survey and found that the users did not like both version 2 and version 3 of the application and they wanted the old familiar version 1 look. So Goldie went back to Captain Cube and asked if there was a way to revert back all the changes. Captain Cube immediately said, yes, of course. Each time we create a deployment, a new revision is created for us. For example, when we first created the deployment, it created revision 1, then revision 2, and so on. We can have a look at this by running the kubectl rollout history command, which lists the list of revisions we want. We can get more details by adding the switch of the particular revision. By default, we have 10 versions, or in other words, 10 replica sets are going to be stored. We can change this value if you want to. Now, because Goldie wanted to roll back to a particular revision number, she can run the kubectl rollout, undo deployment with the two revision switch at the end and specify the desired version. If let's say you just wanted to roll back to a previous revision, you can run the kubectl rollout undo without the two revision switch. And then you can run the kubectl rollout status commands to check the status of the deployment. Great. Everyone's happy. Now that we understand pods, replica sets, and deployments, let's talk about Kubernetes networking and cluster architecture in the upcoming videos. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again in the next video.